Well, I brought weed today. What weed? Tropicana. Oh, cool. Did you stop and get some wrap? Yeah. What I no, we're gonna. I didn't know if we were gonna go get them together. But what I did bring a real duck, <laughs> and I'm gonna show y'all how to roll a fat no, Dutch master. Not. I'm gonna show the you right how to roll way. A proper Dutch master. Or maybe You're Teddy will show you. Head. But we're gonna roll fat Dutch master the right way. Take it, dog. Oh. It's all you. There's a fucking thing right here. Okay, they ever it. bring you a place, Matt? You know when you go to a restaurant and they bring you a plate and you take the fucking salisbury steak and put it on the fucking table next to it? I don't want that shit! What are you oh, doing? Oh, god damn it. I don't want that shit to spray with Lysol and all shit. Right, That's right. what I'm saying. Okay. It's gonna fall. It's falling. It's falling. <laughs> we grew this all organically. The only time we harvest the sun from, uh... <laughs> We harvest the sun from the best time of the summer solstice, and we use that sunlight to grow the weed. It's been kissed. It's, we read poetry to the buds. Ernie's like, spray some fucking lights on that table. Let's roll this shit up. <laughs> <laughs> See, now you roll in the inner text, and then you're gonna put the outer text on, my favorite part. That saves. Saves me on a lot of blunts yeah, that I fuck up. Roll. It Ern, is. Ern has to put a little cosmetic mummy wrapping on the outside so that it actually smokes. I'll tell you, nothing pokes through with that double tax. Those hemp wraps, that's my number one thing, is that shit rips through I mean, the you could just, like, not have stems in your weed. You know, if you didn't, like, take the fucking whole bud and shove it in your grinder, just like a fucking caveman, like, grind it all up. Fuck that shit. I'm gonna roll this blunt in front of this fucking elementary school. These are all the things that go with it. I'm just gonna put them on. This is how we do it New York style. Hey, you got the New York blunt. Hey, I'm from fucking New York. You see the leaf came up, but that is a Dutch master. Someone's gonna be like, that shit was roll like shit. No more history on the vanilla Dutch master. It, nowhere does it say vanilla on it, but they used to. <laughs> just that slap. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to have a regular Dutch. So you would order these as vanilla Dutches. But now if you come somewhere out here in Colorado where people don't even know about Dutches and you say vanilla, they get lost looking for it. So you don't have to say vanilla, just look for the blue package. But in New York, we call them vanilla fucking Dutch masters. How was the mattress night one? I overslept. I slept for fucking so long. I went to bed. So that maybe. could be good. Where'd you get that hoodie? What hoodie? What'd you wear? I mean, is it? It's Kiff. Oh. Oh, I see. What the fuck did you take that picture in last night, that 3M thing? That new jacket right there, that blue one. Blur out your face with an effect or? I just took a picture of the beer in the bathroom. And that's just how it came out? Yeah, that's the EQT jacket. It's the EQT reflective. It, I saw it when we were in Toronto at the Adidas store. Damn. And it was like 250, 275. Fucking dope jacket, dude. That's like as dope as the Pharrell one. It's the same material. That's what I'm it's saying. It's literally the same exact material. Yeah. Damn. It's so sick. And then last night, kids on the stream were like, that jacket, where is it? I was like, I think it's just on Adidas.com. And they're all gone, I guess, now. They're like, I don't see it. And I'm like, maybe it's gone. I don't know. Beat you for two photo to chow lunches. We don't have to do them in a row. I'll be back. We can't do it without that fucking cheating ass shotgun though. No, I can. I can do it with a handgun. No, you can't. I'll be, I'll be. You didn't. Because you know why. Because you had to use the, basically the noob tube of the fucking dang game. So I now owe this fucking asshole lunch to Fogo to Chow for two days because he cheated. I didn't cheat. I am just duty. cheat. Comment down below if you think using a flaming shotgun versus a shovel <laughs> is cheating. But. It's okay. If you can live with yourself, my friend. If you can close your eyes tonight, sleep, <laughs> then that's on you. You know what I mean? I guess so. It's your life that has to flash before your eyes, not mine. <laughs> but yeah, so we gotta go do that, and then honestly, the rest of the day is crazy. We're gonna look at these Pusha T's, but I've got, uh, <laughs> I've got uh, some dilemmas that I have to figure out. So there's a dilemma, and I gotta go see if I can work it out, or if I cannot. But right now we're going to Fogo to eat because you can't work out dilemmas with an empty stomach. That's true. <sighs> How did it feel to be back? Oh, great. I can't even think. Nice. We got it's the. So oh, cool. I missed it. It's for bloopers. <laughs> the honey high hemp wraps. <laughs> like, the honey high hemp wraps. I did that pretty good. Well, that was good. Yeah. We got Let's mm. Mm. Oh, you scared? You scared, Doc? Oh, all right. I'm done. Seatbelt. All right. We're out here. 
Oh yeah, <laughs> they look good with the yellow. Fucking clout goggles, son. <laughs> <laughs> you doing? No more. You get off? That's not an off, that's a down. You're silly. Guess what? I'm not going anywhere this weekend. Nope, we're staying here. Yeah. All right, so today has been a little bit hectic for me. I've had to, basically the past couple of days or week or so really, me and Sager have been trying to restructure a lot of things. We've just grown really large over the last year. I appreciate all the support and love that we've gotten from you guys. Uh, whole thing has been insane. The whole experience so far has been insane. But we're growing so quickly and we've grown so quickly that, um, We've just hit some snags. So we had to like restructure some shit going on too. Like there's, I have like an event I was supposed to go to Friday night for Ernie's birthday party. We, birthday party, birthday. His birthday, me and Brandy bought tickets uh, to go see Joe Rogan and that's Friday night. So I was supposed to go do that. Uh, Saturday, I have another friend coming in town who was supposed to tattoo who I completely forgot about, which I told them okay like a year ago. Uh -huh, like I'm super behind designing. There's so much travel coming up. There's um, New York, London, Berlin, other stuff I have going on. You know, drops, future drops for us as far as a brand go. I just, I'm just super behind like really really behind and it's because I'm trying to do too much like I'm trying to be in three places at once and I really can't be at three places at once I'm not even that good at being at one place at once so unfortunately in this situation uh, Memphis is gonna lose out it sucks I'm really sorry I know that some people bought tickets solely to come see me and meet me and buy merch and stuff like that and I really do apologize I don't um, I really don't have an excuse. It's it's literally just I'm too busy to jump on another plane, go back across the country, and then come back over here and try to catch up, make sure our shipping is on time for the next drops, make sure designs are done for future drops, and just like overall keep my team happy. So um, it's just too much stress. Like I just can't do it. Um, I love everybody at SneakerCon and I appreciate everyone who still supports. And I'm sorry for those of you who I've probably upset today. It's really not my intention. I definitely, um, I hate doing this shit like last minute like that. And I really today tried to just move a hundred things around and make a hundred excuses as to why I needed to go. The reality is, is I need to stay home. Get my house situated, like for real. I know some people think that, some people don't understand too, my house isn't really a house. This is like a working studio. He came out here and hung out for a day. You totally understand. But regardless, um, I do need to get some things straight just in general and I need some time. So this weekend will be perfect for me to do those things and I just I just can't swing it. So um, yeah, sorry again, SneakerCon Memphis. Uh, thanks everybody for understanding that. It is much appreciated. And for those of you that don't understand, I'm sorry. And Tennessee, I promise you, I promise, promise, promise you, next year when we do like a tour situation, I will absolutely come to Memphis. Absolutely. Promise. It's a promise. All right. So there we go. A big piece of news that just broke that I'm going to go ahead and talk about because everyone's going to ask me. Yeezy Mafia just tweeted out that there are three Ultra Boost 1.0 restocks coming. Re release, retro, whatever you want to call it. Uh, November of 2018. That's next year. I think some people thought that was this year. It's next year that this is supposed to happen. People will think that one of my big opinions of Jordan and Nike is that they continued to retro the same things over and over and over again and ruin classics, which is true. And then they're gonna say, well, this is Adidas is doing the same thing. This is exactly the same thing. To a point, you cor you're correct, but to a point, you're also wrong. So for me, let's just stick to Jordan. And I'm, I'm not a huge fan of Jordans at all anyway, but let's just stick to Jordan. Jordan's got retro for 20 some years. This is being, let's just call it a retro just for the sake of argument. This is being retro two years later, right? Um, and there's some minor differences when they release the new ones supposedly have the 3D printed heel cup, uh, the Chinese New Year colorway. They're in three colors. The Cream Ultra Boost is re-releasing. Only difference is going to have a 3D printed heel cup. Um, the Multicolor 1.0 will be re-releasing and the Chinese New Year 1.0. Only difference on this one is it won't have the Chinese New Year branding. Uh, it's an interesting move. I, I'm not going to lie and say that it doesn't catch me off guard. I think it's kind of interesting. I mean, I guess I understand it from the sense of especially the Creams being one of the more sought after shoes if they're trying to re-release that for the masses to grab then cool I guess I don't really it doesn't bother me in the sense of like I don't value shoes from their monetary value like they're to be worn 
return. I don't collect them. I don't just keep them in boxes. I wear them. Whatever they depreciate to, they depreciate to. Like if I spill nachos on the creams tomorrow, I'm not gonna like lose my mind. It's money spent. Money spent is money gone. So that doesn't bother me. Um, I do have an issue, I guess. Like, I don't want to see them just re-release all the 1.0 Ultra Boost. I don't, I just don't want to see it. Like I don't, I just don't think there's any real point. People slept on them back in the day to re-release them all over again. Seems kind of silly to me. So for me, if they did that, I would probably be a little bummed out and just kind of like, well, why aren't we, why aren't we getting new ones? You know, if we're going to re-release 1.0, my beef is like, well then just give me new colorways. You know, like let's just get more collab. Let's get different colorways. Let's throw some fucking gold heel cups on these bitches for God's sake. Just do new stuff. So I don't really get it. I don't really understand it. But it also, you know, it is what it is. But and the thing about like retro and shoes too is like it's either always too soon or it's always too late. There's never a right time. Um, as well as these shoes, these three shoes, I've also heard rumors that the OG Ultra Boost are probably still going to be limited. You know, it's not going to, actually from what I've heard, I know they're going to be like not the easiest to get, just like anything else that's hard to get. Um, but it will affect resale. Resale is obviously good. Uh, for those people who want creams and those other colors, they're stoked. You know what I mean? And those people who paid crazy resale for it are upset. Those people holding on to the shoes are going to be upset. And it's just, like, there's so many perspectives on the shit that it's hard to really, I guess, depending on the situation that you have with the relationship you have with the cream Ultra Boost or any of these will depend on how you feel about this re-release and of course like all the nike fanboys or whatever like oh boost is dead they're doing you know, but i mean just shoe company shoe companies do what they do and um i've been pretty vocal about it like if and, you know i think it begs the question of why a grail is a grail to some people you know if the cream ultra boost is your grail and it has been it was your grail yesterday before you found out this information it should still be your grail in november 2018 if these shoes release you know it's your grail should be based off personally the shoe you feel you can't live without. The shoe that you just want more and more of and like, you have to have. Like if your reasoning behind having to have something is only because others have not or are without, then I think there's some sort of weird emotional disconnect. And I don't think that has anything to do with shoes. Some people are gonna go in and say, you just went in on the black pigeon for the exact same thing. You're a hypocrite, you're this, you're that. And the word, the word of the day, or the word to remember is relevance. The Ultra Boost 1.0 is still relevant. And I know that to some people, the SB pigeon is still relevant, has all this history. But to me, like in the current uh, scope of things, I'm not ever thinking about like, oh man, you know what I really would like? A fucking re-release of an old SB. Literally every single day I hear someone say, please God let them retro the 1.0. Please God let them re-release the 1.0. So there's a ton of people that miss the boat who still want it. So from a business standpoint, I kind of understand it. My only point is I don't want Adidas, and it doesn't matter what I want, but I don't personally want Adidas to lose its relevance by just continuing to do the same old thing that it already did. I would much more welcome just new colorways, new designs, new collabs, new everything. And if they need to sprinkle an old release in there, here and there, I don't have a problem with it. If that makes me a hypocrite, then I guess I'm a fucking hypocrite. I'm, I don't think 20 years versus two years is the same thing. I don't think 20 year, 10 years versus two years is the same thing. So, uh, and like I've said before, if we're still doing this in 2000, you know, like if they release the creams now and then they release the creams again and they release the creams again and, you know, in 2025, we're still re-releasing Cream Ultra Boost 1.0, then yeah, I will have been long gone. Um, but yeah, that's how I feel about it. So, just so we're clear. I know that I'm gonna, still gonna ask like all all day long about how I feel about this re-release but yeah so it'll be interesting to see what happens sum that up uh, don't really uh, don't really care that they're re-releasing these I'll probably even cop pairs of them to be honest just to see uh, same time I don't really want to see it just go down this road of just uh, everything coming back because that would be kind of ridiculous but at the same time I'd be able to cop some shit I don't have I guess who knows who knows you know what the world's crazy right now speaking of crazy all kinds of shoes still coming out Obviously, we have Yibras coming Saturday. Good luck to everybody. I do believe that I'll, I mean, obviously, I'll have at least one pair, so we'll see what happens. People have been asking me what I think about Yibras left and right. I love them. I, anything solar yellow, I pretty much fuck with, or solar any color, so definitely looking forward to that, and they're probably the ones I'm looking forward to the most out of the next three that are dropping. But to talk about shoes real quick, because then I have to go, uh, today is just, I'm, I'm sure you can tell I'm all over the place, but I did want to give you guys a little quick look at 
some shoes. I think this shoe super slept on. Uh, as we've been saying, a lot of shoes have dropped in November. This kind of just slid in there. At one point they were calling it the Complex Con exclusive, which it is certainly not. These are sitting all over the place. They may even eventually go on sale, but super slept on and like really a nice collab for the year. And this one actually has, I guess, the chip in it. EPC inside. I don't know if that means EPC, I guess. Uh, but yeah, the EQT support for a PK King Push. Uh, these are the brown paper bags, also known as the Bodega Babies. They do come in a brown box and a brown paper bag, which is a really nice cut. They come with an extra set of lace. These shoes wrapped in the Pyrex paper, which is always a lovely touch. The King Push stuff. About, if you don't know about King Push, Pusha T, um, he is a rapper and a lot of his success has come from uh, selling and distributing cocaine and a lot of the references in the shoe kind of like nod to that world that life bodega which isn't necessarily like a like drug involved but because it's a product of its environment but bodega is used for many things you know you go down and get yourself a snack get yourself whatever brown bag is where your 40 goes brown bag is where you put some cash roll it up take it across town brown bag is where you put drugs take it across town roll it up i'm just reporting how this shit works if anybody if you spend any time in uh places that are bodega heavy you already know. If you don't know, it's okay. You probably don't need to know more than you already do, but you could watch a bunch of movies about it. Pusha has released a couple of shoes. There was a, honestly, one of the first Adidas shoes that I, that brought me back was the black Pusha T that doesn't have boost, the black EQT Pusha T. It's in here somewhere. I'm gonna grab it. Um, Actually, false alarm, I can't find it. I have no clue where it is. What did I do with that shoe? Well, okay, but there's a black EQT support and it doesn't have, uh, it doesn't have boost. It's just a black shoe. It was the black scales. <laughs> And when they moved into the uh, Boost models, they did another support in the gray or silver. And I got that. That was a really nice shoe. I really like this shoe. I don't get to wear it too often, but I still, it still, it gets worn. This would be the brown paper bag. But I also would like to add that it's a lot gold. It's got a little bit of a gold vibe to it more than just straight brown. It's not like gum brown or anything. So you have two different kind of tones. You have more of the brown paper bag tone and then you have the gold tone that goes all throughout the PK. But the PK, although still brown, has that shimmery kind of gold effect. And honestly reminds me of the Stellas that look like this that they don't make in my size. I believe it's an Ultra Boost. I don't know what it is. Whatever, it's a Pure Boost. The Stella Pure Boost. But they don't make it in my size and it's super sick and I basically tell every girl to buy that pair because they're dope as fuck. I knew as soon as they announced these I was gonna have to get them. I just, there's just so much stuff that I just had to kind of juggle everything around. So all PK upper uh, surrounded with fish scale leather panels. Fish scale heel panel. Uh, fish scale. Fish scale. Fish scale. And then, if, you know, like the other pairs, you have the King Push Dubrays. These are the laces that come in it. These are a little bit more, I think these laces are a different color. I'm pretty sure these are just a little bit less gold, but they might almost, they might just be the same color. Uh, this one does have an insole. It has like the Pyrex, Pyrex sticker looking insole. Uh, for these, to me, they're still true to size. A lot of people size down a half size in these, which I could probably do. There's a little bit of, at my true size, there's a little bit of room in the toe, and there's a little bit of room in the ankle, but the shoe's a little bit more narrow to me. So when I like, try to size down, it kind of constricts my foot, and I don't like it. But I just stay with my true size and deal with a little bit of room in the toe and heel. These aren't as comfortable as, say, like EQT 9317s or even Ultra Boost. It's just a different fit. They're still really, really comfortable, and I have no problem with they don't they don't hurt it's not like I'm like oh man I can't wear these all day I can still wear them all day long a uh, little textile fabric steez three stripes which also kind of offset the gold tone fabric three stripes made up on the side that makes the lacing system as well I really like the three stripe lacing system which is also one of my favorite parts they did on the woodwood which is still probably my favorite ultra or at least one of them um, it's hard to have favorites you know I don't know what's my favorite anymore but uh, yeah and then white sole people don't like white soles but sole white boost and then a Kind of like clear white torsion system, which is cool. I don't know why I freak out over details. But that's also the thing about this shoe. Like, I like this shoe, and it's the reason I like the Packers shoe. I like the details. I like the whole Pusha T story. I like fish scale being on the shoe with the tip of the hat to the culture and Pyrex and just the whole thing. Like, I fuck with it. I roll with it. I love Pusha, so uh, I probably would cop all of these, so yeah. Except for the friends and family is a white pair. I'm not gonna break my neck to get that pair. If someone was to send them on over, 
it wouldn't be a problem for me though. So push it. Need the address, let me know. And yeah, that's pretty much it. That's the shoe. Uh, I'm gonna get out of here for the day. See you guys tomorrow once again. Sorry Memphis for not being able to make it. And um, yeah, we'll get cracking on something else tomorrow. Push the T, Bodega Babies, baby. Mm -hmm.